Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out-of-this-world story from our space. Ex-wife, 33 female, won't stop trying to contact me, and it's messing me up. It has been over six months since D-Day, five months since divorce, and I still need some advice. I do not have enough time to tell my full story, but here's what I can tell you. Married five years, had a great bond. We had made it the choice to not have kids until we were both 35. I pretty much caught her in the act with her affair partner in her bedroom. I had been pretty clear about my views on infidelity right from when we started dating and had told her very clearly that cheating was a complete no-no for me. I stayed calm throughout the entire ordeal. I asked her to get dressed. I called up her elder sister who lived in a nearby town and asked her to pick up my wife. I blocked her on all platforms and talked to my lawyer about the divorce proceedings. They drove back to my house the next day and she immediately threw herself onto me and started crying profusely. She wanted me to give her a chance to explain herself. Even though I did not really want to hear any of it, and my answer would still be divorce whether she cheated a hundred times or just once, I sat down with her and asked her some questions. My first question was, was it an emotional affair or just a physical one? She seemed to be stupefied for a good five or six seconds before tears started streaming down her face, and she whined about how I could even think she would have an emotional affair with someone else other than me and swore it was a purely physical one. My second question was, were you unsatisfied in our marriage in any way? She claimed she wasn't. She was incredibly happy with both our sex life and her financial status. What was the reason then? I don't know, she said, and absolutely broke down. She got on her knees and said she feels disgusted with herself. She said she was going through a lot since she wasn't doing well in her job, and she wanted to validate her own importance in her mind. She often talked to me about her job, too. I supported her wholeheartedly, and she was also going to therapy for it. Even though I did not understand her reason, I did not poke much into it. How many times were you physically involved? She told me it was only three times of physical contact, and she had apparently never allowed him to kiss her. I don't know if that was supposed to make me feel better about it. With that, I was done. I told her that I wanted a divorce. Surprisingly, she did not say anything, just nodded and went to the guest room and locked herself up with her sister. Unfortunately, though, before I could serve her the divorce papers, our district went into lockdown and travel between districts was prohibited. Thus, in an unfortunate turn of events, it seemed I would need to spend a full week with my wife in the same house and I could not even file for divorce because the courts were closed. But I was not having that BS. I decided to move out and live in my neighbor's house instead, and that helped somewhat. I would still see her every day. Dark circles, swollen eyes, she looked nothing like before. One day, she got too drunk, and I heard her shouting in a room, I disgust you, don't I? You can't even look at my face. And she repeated that the whole night. Another day, I bumped into her talking to someone on the phone, in the footpath in the front of her house, and she immediately started freaking out and screamed, I was not talking to him, I promise. It was just my colleague from work. A while later, she seemed to realize her mistake and walked away without another word. A week later, they moved away, and I moved back into my house. I got done with the divorce about a month later. Bizarrely, she did not demand anything from me in the settlement. Six months later, she would still text me and call me sometimes. She once drove over 50 miles to see me when I was ill with COVID. I have not been doing very well. I do still love her. The way she was truly mournful of her mistakes sometimes almost made me feel for her again. But on other times, I just want to cut her off completely and start fresh. I'm not sure if I would be able to love or marry again. But I did get along with a few hookups in the last two weeks or so, and to be honest, it does feel better somewhat. I do not know if I can move on if we keep talking. I have told her not to talk to me, but she does not listen. Should I just block her everywhere? I really do not want to hurt her, but she has not left me any option. What should I do? Let's check in with some comments before the update. Throwaway Baird 61 says, It is to your credit that you do not want to hurt her. That indicates that you are a good person. But she hurt you badly and she destroyed her marriage and lied to you and betrayed you. You need to burn her to everyone and shut her down on everything and block her everywhere. She made the bed now it's time for her to lie in it. Not Rick Deckard, 1982, says, Of the things I'm certain I know for sure, high on the list is that every person that cheats knows exactly why they did it. And that reason is that they wanted to cheat more than they wanted the relationship they were already in. Everything else is just semantics and rationalizations. You've done the hard part. It's over. Let it be over. She's someone else's problem now. You may still love her, but she stopped loving you the minute she thought cheating was okay. If she ever loved you at all. See, love is also a verb. She certainly wasn't loving you while cheating with him. 
update. So I did exactly what I had intended to do. I called her up and told her that I wished to go completely no contact for a few months. For a few seconds, I heard nothing on her end. Long enough for me to ask if she even heard me. She said she did hear me and started fumbling for words once again. I explained to her that it was not any fault of her. It was just me that was finding it difficult to move on with my life if we kept talking. She said she understood and promised not to contact me. Before hanging up, she asked me if I was planning on completely cutting her off. I bluntly told her that I was not planning to do so at the moment, but I might change my decision in the future. She told me it was alright, that I deserved to do whatever I needed to get over it, and told me that she would try to find a new job during these months. With that, I bid her farewell and proceeded to block her on all platforms. A few hours later, her sister called me up. She told me I had made a good decision, especially since ex-wife needed this no-contact period too. She only did a part-time job, hardly ever went out, and spent the entire day going through old pictures. Thus, at least for the moment, I feel like I have made a good decision. A lot of people have messaged me asking me several questions that were left untouched in the original post. Here, I would like to clear out some. How long has the affair been going on? According to her, they first had sex when she went on a work-related trip to another city, which was about one month before D-Day. Now, she claims there was no sexual tension between them before this trip, but on the other hand, they had been working together in the same office for about three months, so I really can't tell if she's lying. 2. How did you behave in the days before D-Day and immediately after it? In the few weeks before D-Day, when her affair was ongoing, I did not really notice anything out of the ordinary. I am generally a very perceptive individual. The usual signs of an affair such as increased conflict, anger, blaming, trying to keep one's phone close by at all times. I did not notice any of it with her. In fact, she only grew quieter every day. I figured it was because of the problems she was facing in work and had a good talk with her. She hiked my chest and cried for several minutes, and I did my best in comforting her. We also had a lot of sex that week, as we usually did every week. I feel kind of embarrassed saying this, but we did a role play of her as a criminal and me as a policeman who caught her and then had forceful sex with her. It was her idea. In hindsight, it does not make some kind of sense now, though it kinda s me off. Apart from that, I noticed nothing out of the ordinary. On the day of discovery, she was dazed throughout the ordeal. It seemed her brain was switched off. She just looked at me with wide eyes, tears streaming down, and just nodded when I told her to wait for her elder sister while I left back to work. Later, sister-in-law later called me up to tell me that ex-wife was nowhere to be found. I was preparing to go out in search of her when she called again to tell that she found ex-wife walking around in a dazed state around our neighborhood. She was either searching for me or for her affair partner. I don't know which. In her sister's house, she apparently also tried to harm herself physically, but then calmed down and had some rest. 3. Is she still talking to her affair partner? This is one point that I failed to mention in my original post. She quit her job immediately after D-Day. According to her, she could not bear to see a fair partner there every day. I had anticipated that she would use this opportunity to ask for a heavy stipulation from the divorce, which made it even more bizarre that she didn't. 4. Was she really talking to her fair partner on the phone when you stumbled upon her on the footpath? Frankly, I don't know, and I haven't asked. 5. How was your relationship after the divorce? We did have a no-contact period of about one week after the divorce. Later, she called me up and asked me if I could consider keeping a friendly relationship with her. I saw no harm in it, so I agreed. We agreed that we would not talk about the divorce or our married life. We just asked each other about work and about how we were doing. As for the frequency of contact, I would say minimal. Once or two texts per day maybe, and sometimes none for days. Sometimes we would talk over call, but not for long periods. We never met physically. She did once drive over when I was ill, but was not allowed to actually meet me physically because I was in the isolation ward. 6. Have you tried therapy? Of course. I have been in therapy since D-Day. Ex-wife went to a therapist for the first two months after the divorce, but then stopped going for no apparent reason. Some people in the comment section seemed to misunderstand my original post. They kept posting comments asking me to consider reconciliation. I would like to reiterate that my original post was about whether I should block her or not, and not about reconciliation. I made the decision to not reconcile a long time ago, an ex-wife has accepted it. It is not about how much she regrets and mourns over it. I am simply incapable of trusting her again. And now some quick comments before we wrap up. Red Porch Killa says, I okay. I commend you for your stance and upkeep of values. As many others stated, no contact would be the healthier way for you to move on, but you are being very professional about how to handle your interaction with the ex. Question. What did you do with the bed, mattress, and linen? I hope you discarded it and placed something new for yourself. Despite your stance, which is outstanding and definitely will help you to heal, 
you will be getting confronted with triggers for a long time. So mementos and remembrance of this awful day will always poke at you. All the best for you and your future. EOP responded with, First of all, thank you. Thankfully, her sister took care of cleaning your mess up for me. I saw nothing but a few ripped packets of condoms in the dustbin outside. Moreover, even though I did say bedroom, they were not having sex on the bed. They were doing it on a couch. I do not know if they used the bed prior to moving to the couch, and I do not intend to find out. I sold them my furniture off anyway. Comprehensive ad 6396 closes us out. Cut her contact. That's good for your future. If you keep friendly contact with her, she's definitely brainwashed you. And if you see her face and hear her voice indefinitely, remember her betrayal. So don't allow the pain once again. Start a fresh life. It's your life. All the best.